In 1975, 10 European countries came together with a vision to collaborate on key space activities, exploration and science, launch capabilities, and applying space for communication, navigation, and observing Earth. The European Space Agency, ESA, is born. And so in 2025, ESA celebrates half a century of joint European achievement, filled with firsts and breakthroughs in science, exploration and technology, and the space infrastructure and economy that power Europe today. Join us as we look forward to a year that honours ESA's legacy and promises new milestones in space. During the past five decades, ESA has grown, developing even bolder and bigger projects and adding more member states, with Slovenia joining as the latest full member state in January. In 2025, ESA will celebrate the legacy of those who came before, but also help establish a foundation for the next 50 years. Aside from ESA's golden anniversary, in 2025, we also celebrate 30 years of satellite navigation in Europe and 20 years since ESA launched the first demonstration satellite, Jovi-A, which laid the foundation for the EU's very own satnav constellation, Galileo. Today, Galileo is fully operational and providing a variety of services to users worldwide. In 2025, ESA will continue to deploy the constellation with more first-generation satellites, while the second generation of Galileo satellites is further developed and built. By the end of next year, the first of these new Galileo second generation satellites will be delivered. With new missions such as LEO PNT and Genesis on the horizon, the future for European SatNav is bright and even more precise. And there is even more rejoicing as the S-Track network also celebrates its 50-year anniversary with the inauguration of a new 35-metre antenna at the new Norsha station in Australia, alleviating the operational capacity demands for ESA missions in the coming years while also providing new capabilities for scientific missions such as higher data rates, K-band uplink and increased downlink performance. Another notable anniversary in 2025 includes the 20th anniversary of ESA's Business Incubation Centres, or BICS, with 30 centres across 21 member states supporting over 1,600 startups. The BICS highlight ESA dedication to fostering innovation and bolstering Europe's space industry. And lastly, 2025 marks the 30th year in space for SOHO, the joint ESA and NASA Solar and Heliospheric Observatory. This marvel of a spacecraft studies the Sun, making observations of its hot interior, its visible surface and stormy atmosphere. In the depths of space, Gaia's science mission will conclude after a decade of mapping the stars. Through several data releases, Gaia has provided us with an extremely detailed map of our own galaxy. By March, the spacecraft will be placed in a disposal orbit, yet its legacy of data will continue to shape our understanding of the Milky Way for many years to come. As one Deep Space Telescope retires, another one provides its first full data release. Launched in 2023, Euclid has already delivered some stunning images but not its first large data release until early 2025, which will further our understanding of the role of dark matter and dark energy within our universe. As Euclid scans our universe from its position in deep space, soon ESA's new fly-eye telescope will scan our heavens from here on Earth. This special telescope has been made as a better way of detecting asteroids and comets that may potentially threaten our planet. Thanks to its insect-like wide field of vision, FlyEye will be able to automatically scan the skies for potentially hazardous asteroids and comets. Now in 2025, after years of development, the first test images will be released. Sadly, 2025 will also mean the end of science operations for Integral, ESA's International Gamma Ray Astrophysics Laboratory. 
This spacecraft has studied explosions, radiation, formation of elements, black holes and other exotic objects in space since 2002. Now, after 22 years, the time has come to retire the mission and start preparing for re-entry into Earth's atmosphere as ESA adheres to its zero debris principle. The year ahead promises major advancements in space-based connectivity, beginning development of Iris Squared, Europe's independent satellite constellation for secure communications, and progress on Moonlight, a constellation of communications and navigation satellites supporting lunar missions. With climate change causing increasingly extreme natural disasters, our civil security from space programme remains at the forefront of crisis response. 2025 will once more show ESA's dedication to our own planet through the plethora of Earth observation satellites that are to be launched in the coming year. For Copernicus, the Sentinel-4 and 5 missions will be carried by soon-to-be-launched new meteorological satellites operated by UMITSAT. Sentinel-4 will fly on an MTG sounder satellite and Sentinel-5 on the Meteo-P SGA-1 satellite. Both missions will focus on the variables in our own atmospheric and services will include the monitoring of air quality, stratospheric ozone and solar radiation and climate monitoring. Two more Copernicus satellites will also be launched in 2025. First, there is the Sentinel-1D, which will replace Sentinel-1A in orbit and work in tandem with Sentinel-1C, providing continuous radar imaging of our planet. Sentinel-6B will also be teaming up with its twin satellite once in orbit. This mission is aimed at monitoring ocean topography and sea level rise. A crucial undertaking as humankind wants to be able to better understand the effects of climate change. Biomass is another Earth observation mission that flies into space in 2025. This mission is designed to deliver crucial information about the state of our forests and how they are changing. With its novel P-band synthetic aperture radar to deliver completely new information of forest height and above ground forest biomass from space. Biomass will also further our knowledge of the role forests play in the carbon cycle. In 2025, ESA will also launch the SMILE mission, or Solar Wind Magnetosphere Ionosphere Link Explorer. This spacecraft will fly on Vega C and is a joint mission with the Chinese Academy of Science. SMILE will study the interaction between Earth's protective shield, the magnetosphere, and the supersonic solar wind. The most powerful version of Europe's new heavy lift rocket, Ariane 6, is set to fly operationally for the first time in 2025. Lifting off with four boosters from Europe Spaceport in French Guiana, this Ariane rocket will be the most powerful European rocket to be launched into space. With several European commercial launcher companies planning to conduct their first orbital launches in 2025-2, ESA is kicking off the European Launcher Challenge to support the further development of European space transportation industry and to establish a more diverse set of European launch service providers to guarantee reliable, secure and flexible access to the benefits of space for Europe and its citizens. ESA continues to invest into human spaceflight. Soon, Polish astronaut Slavoj Usnanski will fly to the ISS on the commercial Axiom 4 mission. Slavoj is an ESA project astronaut and will join the Axiom 4 crew as a mission specialist. The crew will remain on board the ISS for 14 days and conduct microgravity research and educational activities after docking with the orbital laboratory. The year that ESA looks back on a half-century of European achievement will also be one of the key decisions on our future. At the Ministerial Council towards the end of 2025, our Member States will convene to ensure that Europe's crucial needs, ambitions and the dreams that unite us in space become reality. And so, in 2025, ESA looks ahead to a busy and exciting year delivering for our member states what we Europeans need today in space to ensure that we are safe, secure, autonomous and economically strong 
on the way to a sustainable future and inspiring our children and the world with daring journeys into the cosmos.